Hello everyone, this is Jerry with San Pedro Mastery. Today we have the latest update on the cacti I'm growing in small containers. It's been 4 months since I started to grow. And if you remember well, there were some trays with very old seeds that did not germinate. And those were replaced 3 months ago. So the plants you will see in this video will be either 3 or 4 months old. It's actually been 2 months since the previous video in this series. 2 months during which I did absolutely nothing to them. I did not even look at them. So we'll see if they're still alive, and if there are any issues. In theory, we should be good, because at that age, mold is not an issue. It cannot kill them anymore because the plants are bigger and tougher. As for the insects, there won't be an issue either, because the containers are closed, so the bugs can't get in. Let's start with the peyotes, and aren't these beautiful? I mean, peyotes are such good looking plants, I could look at them for hours. These are the peyotes I bought from that well-known German seed producer, and they've grown quite a bit since the last video. They still look quite green, but their green color will progressively turn to a bluish color, which is going to make them look even better. With peyotes, the bluish color comes from getting older, whereas on the San Pedro, it comes from being placed in the shade. Of course, the genes also have their share of influence in the blue color, and some strains or species will be more blue or more green than others. And that applies to both peyotes and Trichocerus cacti. Next, we have a container of peyote seeds from my dad. These are looking beautiful too, but look at that soil. It has completely dried out. I guess these plastic leaves are not really hermetic, because this one allowed the soil to dry completely in two months. These peyotes are a month younger than the others, which means they are just 3 months old. You can see the difference in color, they are more green. In fact, at that age, you can see quite a range of different shades of green. Just as a reminder, these I got from a new seed provider that turned out to be disappointing. Only 62 plants out of 165 seeds, that's a 30% germination rate. Now let's start looking at the Trichocerus babies. Here's one of several containers I grew of the Bolivian torch or Trichocerus brigitte. Interestingly enough, some of the plants are reddish on their bottom part. This is nothing to worry about, it's just how brigitte are when they are that age. If I were to grow these indoors under a fluorescent T5 tube, they probably would not be so red, but outside they are getting more light, even though the sun is heavily filtered by two layers of shade cloth. They get a bit red, but they are okay. Of course, if they become totally red, then you will need to reduce the light, or filter it some more. But as long as they look like the ones on the screen now, you're good. These seeds are not produced by me, but I'm very happy with them, for various reasons. They are properly identified, what you get is pure Bolivian torch. They are fresh as well, which is important, but not as important as them being correctly identified. And lastly, they grow very fast. They grow about twice as fast as pacanoids do. Well, at least as young plants, they do. I don't know if they will keep up with that crazy growth rate when they are adult, that would be cool. Just look at how big these plants are. Compared to all the other species that I am growing in this small container project, they are the tallest plants. Some of these plants have actually run into the lid of the container, and I think it might have damaged the tip on this one. It looks a bit funny. Or maybe is it that the spines have grown flat against the lid? When something like this happens, then you know it's time to remove the lid. Don't do it at once. The plant needs a soft transition from a wet environment to a dry one. I suggest you wrap the containers in transparent film and start making holes for it right away. Obviously, you can position the first holes just above the tallest plants to allow them to pass through. These are pacanoids or San Pedros that are three months old, but they look like they're half that age. Look at how red they are. They must have been exposed to too much sun when they were younger, and this has stunted their development. Once young seedlings turn red, then they will grow much slower, until they regain their green color, if they don't die that is. That happens mostly to really young seedlings. Also, here the soil looks really dry, which makes matters even worse. It's a bad combination. I have grown the very same seeds in larger trays, and they have grown much faster. The key is to keep them green and wet when they are young, but with this small container here, I totally failed. It was probably placed near the edge of the table at the back. There's a row of container there that receives direct, unfiltered sun near the end of the day. I totally neglect the containers. I shouldn't do that. 
But in my opinion, that works out well for a tutorial video. Like this, I can show you the bad things that can happen in a grow when you don't check on them. And you learn more from it than if everything was going perfect. This is a very popular species, the Taquim balances. I say very popular because a lot of people have requested these seeds from me. And they're already looking big and beautiful, but that's nothing like what the plants will look like when they're adults. I just love the looks of the Taquim balances. At four months of age, the ribs are still not formed, but they will come in their own time. Here is another batch of Taquim balances that I did a month after the previous one. So these are only three months old. And the difference with the ones you've just seen before is striking. They are much smaller. But you can already recognize them as Taquim balances. Now we have the Knutianus. On these, the ribs can already be distinguished. The Knutianus is one of my favorite Trichoceros plants looks-wise. Especially this strain, which once adult has very long spines. Very unique. It looks like spines from a Bridget in fact. I've never seen another Knutianus looking like this. These are the hybrids of Atacamensis crossed with Pacanoi. They are looking nice. I'm just very curious as to what the adult plants look like, as the mother and father couldn't look more different from each other. Note how the soil has totally dried. After this video is shot, I will ditch the hard plastic lids that came with these containers, as these don't provide a good seal, especially when it's hot outside. And I will replace them by some saran wrap or kitchen transparent film that works much better. Now this larger container did not come with its own lid. So it's been covered in transparent film since day one. These are three month old Bridgetsies. If you remember well, it's that container that is very flimsy and flexible, which made the soil crack. The plants in the last video were just tiny green dots. They've grown quite a bit since. These are Icaro DNA Peruvianus seeds. Those were really old seeds that had a close to zero germination rate. Three plants originally came up, out of which only one still survives. But there is another one next to it that finally decided to germinate. Now let's give these babies some water, as the soil in many containers has totally dried up during the past two months since I did the last video. You don't want to water them with a sprinkler, as the force of the water may disrupt the plants and push them flat against the soil. The best way to water them is to gently pour water from the sides of the container, just like I'm doing now in this video. Don't use tap water, as it has too much chloride in it. Just grab a cheap bottle of spring water from the supermarket. You won't need much of it anyway. Of course, you could also water the plants with a spray bottle, but that would take ages, because you have to wet all of the soil, not just the surface layer. If you want to copy these videos, but you haven't started yet, do not use the leads that come with the containers. Instead, wrap it up in transparent film, as it's shown in my video, how to grow the San Pedro from seeds. In fact, you're going to see me doing that again in a minute. I can tell you for a fact that if you use transparent film to close the containers and you make it airtight, then you won't have to water the plants ever. Well, not until you open the containers to expose the plants to the outside. At which point, you will also need to cut open a couple of holes at the bottom of the container for drainage. You can just cut out little square holes in the bottom with a cutter. The containers that have completely dried out, I could perfectly leave them without a lid now. Because they've already had a slow transition from wet to dry. The reason I'm unclosing them again now is because I want them to grow for a bit longer without having to worry about bugs or watering them. That's the great thing about leaving these plants unclosed for various months. You don't have to water and you don't have to worry about bugs. All you need to do is check on them from time to time. But as you know, I have not checked on them in two months, not a single time. My older seedlings that are already in the open, these I have to check on a regular basis. And this wrapping up also wraps up this video, my friends. There will be more updates on these plants, so stay tuned. As always, please hit the thumb up if you enjoyed this video. When you do that, it helps my channel. Also, please leave a comment in the comment section below to let us know how your grow is going. Or if you have any question or anything really. I hope you're having a great summer in spite of the strange times we're living at the moment. Take care and see you very soon.